Hello guys and welcome back to another video and today we'll be working question 9 from the January 2021 math paper 2. So 9a says in the diagram below a, b, c and d are all points on the circumference of a circle with center o and a, o, c, so a, o, c and b, o, d are diameters on the circle and a, b and d, c are parallel. So part one says, state the reason why angle A, B, C, so angle A, B, C is 90 degrees. So from what we've looked at in other parts papers, what we know is that the angle in a semicircle is a right angle, and therefore a right angle is equal to 90 degrees, and that is why angle A, B, C is 90 degrees, and that is our one mark there. Part two now says, determine the value of each of the following angles, show detailed working where necessary and give a reason to support your answer. So now they have asked us to calculate angle B, A, C. So what we know is that from the reason before in part one where angle in a semicircle is equal to 90 degrees. So we know that angle B here is 90 degrees. So therefore the total angle in a triangle, which we're looking at the 90 degrees, the two P degrees and the three P degrees is equal to 180 degrees. So what we know is that 90 degrees plus the two P plus three P is equal to 180 and 2p plus 3p will give us 5p and the 90 degrees was adding here so when it comes across the equal sign it will be subtracting so what we'll have is 5p is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees when we do 180 minus 90 we have 5p is equal to 90 degrees and we're now solving for p so it is p is equal to 90 divided by 5 the 5 was multiplying here so when it comes across it will be dividing and that is how we get P is equal to 90 divided by five. When we put that in our calculator, P is equal to 18 degrees. Now we can go ahead and solve for what is 2P, which is angle BAC as the question required from us. So BAC is equal to the 2P that is at angle A. So therefore, what we do is that therefore 2P would be two multiplied by 18 degrees as one P is 18. So two multiplied by 18 degrees and that will give us 36 degrees. So therefore, angle BAC is equal to 36 degrees. The reasons angle in a semicircle is equal to 90 degrees, which we established from part one, and total angle in a triangle, total degrees, total magnitude in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Mm. So part B now says we're to calculate angle Q. So right here is angle Q. We just found out what angle A is, which is 36 degrees. So we're two P's, that is 36 degrees. So what we know also from the circle theorem is that when two angles are in the same segment, then they tend to be equal if they're sitting on the same arc, then they are equal. So what we know is that two P, which is equal to 36 degrees, will be equal to Q and the reason is that angles at the circumference of a circle standing on the same arc are equal. That is one reason or angles in the same segment of a circle are equal and that is how we get 2P to be equal to Q which is 36 degrees. Part three now says calculate the value of angle R. So we know 36 here, we know 36 here, and we are now looking to calculate the value of R. What we know is that looking at BOC, BOD, this diameter, this here as well is another angle, another triangle in a semicircle. So at angle C right here, this would be equal to 90 degrees. We know what 1P is, which is 18 degrees. So therefore we can go ahead and calculate what 3P is subtract that from 90 and we get the value for r so as i stated earlier semicircle with the diameter bd sub so bd 
So therefore, we're looking at angle C. Angle C right here is equal to 90 degrees as angle in a semicircle is equal to 90 degrees. So therefore, 90 degrees is equal to 3P plus R. So both 3P degrees and R degrees makes up 90 degrees. We know what the value for P is. We calculated it in part one. So P is equal to 18 degrees. We can substitute that. And what we'll get is three multiplied by 18 plus R will be equal to 90 degrees. Three times 18 is 54. So what we have is 90 degrees is equal to 54 degrees plus R. And therefore R is equal to 90 minus 54. The 54 was adding here. So when it comes across the equal sign, it will be subtracting. So what we'll get is 90 minus 54 is equal to R. And when we put that in our calculator, R as well is equal to 36 degrees. Part B now says, from a harbor age, the bearing of two boys, S and Q, so S and Q are 185 degrees, 311 degrees respectively. And Q is 5.4 kilometers from H, while S is 3.5 kilometers from H. And part one says on the diagram below, which shows a sketch of this information, insert the value of the marked angle QHS. So we're looking for QHS. So QHS would be 126 degrees. And we got that because remember from here, it says Q is 311 degrees from H. So this entire pink line here would be 311 degrees. So if we know a part of this 311 degrees, which is from the north line to S, which is 185, we do 185 from 311 and what we'll get is 126 degrees. Part two now says calculate QS. So QS, which is the distance between the two boys. So what we know is that we can use the cosine rule. So QS here would be equal to b square plus c square minus 2bc multiplied by cos the angle. So we're using 5.4 to be our b and 3.5 to be our c. So it is qs squared is equal to 5.4 square plus 3.5 square minus 2bc which is 2 multiplied by 5.4 multiplied by 3.5 cos the angle. In this case it is cos 126 which is this angle right here. We go ahead and we work out 5.4 square, which is 29.16 plus 3.5 square, which is 12.25 minus 2 multiplied by 5.4 multiplied by 3.5 multiplied by cos 126 and we get a negative 22.218. We can then go ahead and plug this into our calculator and what we'll get for the value of QS square will be 63.628 and therefore QS is equal to the square root of 63.628 and what we'll get is 7.977 kilometers and we round that off, we'll get 7.98 kilometers which is written to two decimal places. So the QS here was squared so when we get rid of the square we'll need to square root both sides of the equation and that is how we get the square root here for 63.6. To eight, and therefore the distance between the two points Q and S is 7.98 kilometers. Part three now says calculate the bearing of S from Q. So we're looking at the bearing of S from Q. So we're looking from the north line of Q to here at the point S. What we know is that right here, right at this point between the south line for H and the point S would be five degrees. 
as if from here to here is 180 degrees so from north to south is 180 degrees it means that this additional point is to be 185 minus the 180 degrees and this will give us five degrees and that is how the entire point from the north of h to this point at s is 185 as we know north to south is 180 so therefore whatever additional measurement is there we just subtract 180 from the 185 and we get five degrees there now in calculating the degrees the magnitude right here from the east eastern part of h to right here at q what we'll have is 126 minus 90 degrees minus 5. so this 90 degrees that is formed right here we're subtracting the five degrees from it right here and what we'll get is one 26 minus 85 when we do 126 minus 85 what we'll get is 41 degrees so right at this point here is 41 degrees so five degrees here and 41 degrees here now if we look an alternate angle is formed so a z angle so therefore this z gives rise to this 41 degrees right here so based on this z a 41 degrees is formed right here as well so therefore to get the bearing of s from q we have a 90 degrees here a 41 degrees here and we need to find what the angle here and that will give us the remainder the outstanding amount to complete the bearing of s from q so we can first start by using sine rule to find the theta right here so it would be 3.5 divided by sine theta and we're using 7.983 found previously divided by sine 126 the entire angle right here when we do that sine theta is equal to 3.5 multiplied by sine 126 and all of that is divided by 7.98 so we get sine theta to be 0 0.3550. So therefore, theta is equal to the in sine inverse of 0 0.3550. And we get theta to be 20.79 degrees. So right here is 20.79 degrees. So now we can find the bearing of S from Q, which is along this line here. So therefore, bearing... So that should be bearing of S from Q would then be the 90 degrees here plus the 41 degrees here plus the 20.79 degrees here. And when we do that addition, what we'll get is 151.79 and that is the bearing of S from Q. And this can be rounded off to 151.8 degrees, which is written to one decimal place. And that is the end of question nine. And we'll see you in question 10. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you soon.